video games slash movie news, apparently. Yeah, so uh, you talked about Mortal Kombat earlier. Uh, F. Gary Gray, who's probably my favorite director ever, just because I like saying his name, because if you say it with the right inflection, it just doesn't sound very nice. Uh, F. Gary Gray is <laughs> developing a big screen adaptation of Saints Row. Uh, they had they don't say if they're going to be pulling from the video game or if it's just the vibe or what. But mm-hmm. he's got a screenwriter. They've got production partners. Um, the company that owns the rights to the video game also, uh, which is Koch Media, Coke Media. What, I'm not sure how you would pronounce it. it's K O C H. Um, but they're also um, God, the company they own is THQ Nordic, and they recently bought it. Um, and so they own the Saints Row franchise now, and they also have a film division that they're working with F. Gary Gray and other production companies to make a Saints Row movie a reality. Uh, and the script writer that they have is the one who's working on the Mortal Kombat script right now. Oh. So that's why I was, when you brought up Mortal Kombat, I was like, funny you should bring that up. Um, so Rick and I have a history with the Saints Row video games. Um, <laughs> we played about 150 hours of Saints Row th- the Third, which again is an amazing name. There, it's very tongue in cheek. Like you have yeah. your super serious Grand Theft Auto games, big open world, crime action games, and then you've got Saints Row that are basically National Lampooning what Rockstar Games does with Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto, which is amazing. So. Saints Row the Third, Rick and I played for probably about 150 hours, and probably about 50 of that hours we played together because there was trophies you could only get if you played with another person. And we got the full-on 100% of that game, platinum that game, and still played some more of that game. Um, it was so ridiculously <laughs> fun. Yeah, and then they had Saints Row 4, which was super fun also, and that's another game that I put a lot of time into and played a whole crap load of. Did you, did you ever play the fourth game? I have not. You have not. I played some of it. I didn't. I didn't continue. It. Okay, um, but yeah. So like, the first Saints Row game started a little bit darker, and it was about bringing back this gang to prominence called the Third Street Saints. And then the second game was definitely uh, trying to one up Grand Theft Auto in the open world hijinks with you know jetpacks and rocket launchers and all this shit. And then by the time the third game came out, Grand Theft Auto and Rockstar Games had completely pivoted and took out. All of the over the top shit, and we're trying to make like a Scorsese esque gritty story. And they did that. They did that super well. And I get Grand Theft Auto 4 is a fun game with a great story. But Saints Row the Third was like, you know, all this shit you can't do in Grand Theft Auto, you can do that here. You want to swing a giant dildo bat at somebody? We got you covered. Um, there's uh, sing along sequences during missions with your partners where you get in the car, and then the characters start having a dialogue about. Uh, this is the best song. No, this is the best song. And then a song comes on and they start, it's uh, a song by Sublime and it's a full on, like they sing the entire, if you stay in the car long enough, the characters sing the entire Sublime song together. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's super fun. It's super over the top. It's, it's very com- uh, comedically driven. And uh, I don't know if I've seen a lot of stuff that F. Gary Gray has done. I saw um, Straight Outta Compton, which I thought he did a great job directing that movie. That's one of, like, grew up listening to NWA and being in Southern California and kind of knowing a lot about that story because I was one of those kids that when he liked something, he did a massive amount of research on it to find out all the behind-the-scenes stuff. And so no, knowing what I knew going into that movie, I felt like the movie was super well-paced and, like, did a lot of justice to those human beings and uh, them as characters and their story. And I haven't seen Fate of the Furious, which is, I think, the last thing he directed. And I, I unironically love the Fast and Furious franchise. Uh, but that's one I just haven't seen yet because couldn't get out to theaters when it was out in theaters. Haven't rented it to watch it yet. I could probably pull it up on demand or something now. right now. Um, it's good. I liked it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad because I know a lot of people... Not necessarily didn't like it. It still did really, really well, but like people felt like it was a step backwards for that franchise. If and you're a fan of the franchise, you're yeah. going to like it. Okay, awesome. Um, it's a great franchise. Yeah, dude, I love it. Like I said, I unironically <laughs> love that shit. Like, me too. Oh, me too. No, it's so, it's so stupid. It's good. Like I, You will never, ever, ever hear me say a statement like, it's so bad. I love it. If I love it, 
I fucking love it. I don't need to qualify why I love it because I don't care what anybody thinks about the things I like or don't like. And but yeah, I even Tokyo Drift. I love that movie. Right? It's so fun. That it's so fun. It's one of my favorite ones. Yes. And then when they made the pivot and Vin Diesel came back and they made the pivot and now they became like heist movies. Like mm-hmm. they completely fit, flipped the genre and flipped the characters and made them feel completely different while still keeping what was their core. Yeah. The, the last three I, I feel <sighs> like are like a trilogy. They're yeah, really good. They really are. Uh, well, I haven't seen the eighth yeah. one, so I have But yeah, like even going back to four, like because four is when Vin Diesel comes back and... Then five is five and six are so good, mm. and then uh, seven, man, hits you right here. Uh, I always bring this up, and she hates when I bring this up. But at the end of seven, my wife was like uncontrollably sobbing at the end of that movie because of how well they treated the exit of that character mm-hmm. and that person. And I felt the same way because I am. A big uh, Paul Walker fan, and I think that he gets a bum rap as an actor because he did the Fast and Furious movies f- for the last 15 years of his career. But, like, my favorite performance of his is Pleasantville. And oh, yeah. He's in Pleasantville? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is. And he's so fucking good in that. Oh, God. I yeah. I can't, there was another movie, too, I can't remember, that I just recently saw where he's playing, like, this... He's playing an asshole, and it's an older movie too. It's probably maybe early two thousands, but he's playing an asshole. And I can't remember what it was. Fuck, I wish I could remember what it was. Wolf is a fan too of the Fast and Furious. He but loves him. He's being a dick bag, but he still comes off as super likable, and mm-hmm. I don't understand how that's possible. But he does, and he's really good. And like I said, he gets kind of typecast or pigeonholed into that. Oh, he was just the good-looking guy in some movies, and then he's, you know, this himbo character in the first couple of Fast and Furious movies, and now I'm supposed to buy him as a badass in the subsequent Fast and Furious movies, and it's, it definitely, I I always feel like he pulls off whatever, he pulled off whatever he did, Mm -hmm. and really well, so yeah, like, uh, and and I'm glad you're saying that you liked Fate of the Furious, because I was, I was like, oh, a new director... Like a new voice basically coming into that movie, that genre, and that franchise, it's going to be hard for them to tap into since they haven't been there. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, if you say that they he did it, like well, it it he does exactly what it says there. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you said the Saints Row got yeah more outlandish. Mm-hmm. That's that's what Fate of the Furious is. It's like right. the most outlandish Furious film ever. I mean, The Rock took down a fucking helicopter in in seven. Like, so <laughs> you can't really like you you don't really they, they get top, they top that okay all right uh yeah i need to, i'm probably gonna go home and watch that movie now uh but yeah i'm really excited at the prospect of this becoming a reality but like most mm, you know ips from a different medium coming to the big screen i won't believe it till i see it um the crazy right. thing about it is the main one of the main characters in the saints row games is johnny gat and the voice for that is daniel day kim mm-hmm. so like you could just easily fucking put Dana Day Kim in this movie as Johnny Gat if you like did that. it. Because uh, he's amazing yeah. as, the, as the voice of that character in, in the video games. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm very interested to see where it goes and what they do. And now Saints Row the Third is coming out on Switch next Friday. <laughs> and even though I played it on PS3 and Platinum did, I'm contemplating buying it on Switch and playing through it again. I've never played that one. Should I get it for Switch? Go yeah. for it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, because yeah. it's... Um, how, how similar is it to Grand Theft Auto? Um, I mean, it's open world crime action. I can't so. reach the internet right now. Check your modem or router connection. <laughs> hey, Google! Stop. I can't reach the internet right She's now. broken right now. Oh, Check my God. Check your modem or okay. router connection and try again. Sorry. Um, so... It is it is a template like the template of Grand Theft Auto. Okay, but uh, Vice City is one of my favorite games ever. Oh, so good, right? Um, yeah, it's definitely got more of that vibe to it. Okay, um, but the cars they handle cars handle really well. The gunplay handles really well. The melee combat feels really good. The story is super over the top and fun. <laughs> and yes. um, that's what a video game should be. Yeah, and there's like we were talking we like it. we were talking about Seth Rogen and how he brings like a grounded sense of reality to the characters and the movies he's in. 
this takes the things that like that are supposed to be like grounded and emotional in movies and makes them hilarious. Okay. On purpose. <laughs> on purpose. So yeah, dude, give it a shot. It's it's gonna be thirty bucks. And I think it's Friday that it comes out. I would wholly recommend if you haven't played it to get it because as somebody who's played the ever loving shit out of that game, I'm probably still gonna buy it on Switch because. Even though it is a 20, maybe 20 hour, 15, 20 hour story, you can play it in bite-sized chunks. And the Switch is perfect for that. Okay, cool. So, 